I believe we can start, man. If we are ready, so come on. If you are ready for the session, you can start, please. Now, I would like to welcome our next speaker, Dr. Sunaina Jai. And now, and I'll brief about our expert profile. Dr. Sunaina Jain is working as an assistant professor and area chairperson operation institute, operation at institution institute of management studies gaziabad with 18 years of rich experience she has done bcom and mcom from ccs university and she got she done master in computer application from igno new delhi she has done advanced diploma in software management from itsa srg gaziabad she has also certified courses in computers from IGNO New Delhi. PhD on procurement outsourcing in India, a comparative and analytical study between Forbes India Private Limited and Genfer from CCS University in 2012. Lead auditor certificate in ISO 901, 901208 in 2013. After she graduated, she has published more than 25 papers in various journals and conferences. I welcome you, ma'am. Over to you, Dr. Sir. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. I once again formally welcome our speaker. You can say expertise a speaker in research areas from whom we have learned a lot in uh, in various fields of uh, thank research you. areas. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Shobha, and uh, thank you, Professor Vikas. Uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Shivani for uh, giving me an opportunity to join this uh, FDP as one of the expert. Am I audible, first of all? Yeah, ma'am, you are very clear, ma'am. Ma Is my voice coming clear? Yes, ma'am, it's <coughs> clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, uh, JSS Academy and the entire group for giving me the opportunity and uh, to include, as I stated, I'm thankful to Professor Vikas Singhalji, to, uh, to you, Madam uh, Shobhaji, and to uh, Shivani uh, for always uh, including me in the list uh, so that I, whatever I know, I'm able to share a little. Uh, and I hope uh, we'll stay in contact. Uh, other than that, I want to thank uh, my own institution, Institute of Management Studies, Ghazibad, who has given me this opportunity to speak on this uh, August, uh, in front of this August gathering and on this platform uh, amongst uh, such uh, great resource persons. So uh, the topic uh, which I have chosen today is on research methodology. To be very, uh, you know, precise, it is very hard to uh, discuss the entire research methodology because we all know it is almost like a subject which takes approximately 30 hours to learn in depth. So uh, I, I'll try to uh, you know do a little justice to give you an overview of what all is included in research methodology. See, uh, and why is it important? So uh, before any delay, let me start with my presentation. Is it visible to all? You could, see your, visible. Uh, you could see your browser, ma'am. Yes. Is it still not visible? There's we some problem. Okay, just a second. We, we, we could see your browser, ma'am.
Just, <coughs> just a second. I'm, I'm just looking at that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No problem. I request the participants to be patient. I can see the chat box with a lot many queries like no audio or no video. The expert is about to start with the presentation, please. Just hold on for a moment. Thank you. Is it now visible? It's starting now. My PPT? It's just starting now. Yeah, now it's it starting. Is it visible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is visible now. Confirm. Is it visible now? Yes, ma'am. It is visible, ma'am. Okay. Am I audible to you? Ma'am, it's visible now. Yeah. Am I audible also? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma audible. Break is there from uh, okay. in the network. So. Yeah, I got to know that there's some issue with the uh, network, but see, we all have to work with the technical glitch and that's why we all are researchers. Yeah, <laughs> we need no, to no find issues. a solution for this too. <laughs> no issues, ma'am. No so issues, with, please, with all please. these hindrances, we'll still make it a success. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Please start. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like I said that, uh, you know, within uh, almost one hour, in fact, uh, we are losing on time. So, uh, I, I try to talk about the overview of research, whatever I have tried to gather and say, whatever obligation you do, you collect material. You put it in an order and you want to come out with a, some conclusions, right? Uh, I consider research as searching and researching, continuously working. Excuse me, ma'am. Your voice is not audible. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, ma'am, it's visible now. Okay. So, seriously, there, there's quite an issue of the bandwidth, I think. <laughs> you know, again and again, it is disconnecting. Okay, so uh, I was talking about that uh, in, uh, in research. Obviously, you, you try to find out the gaps of the previous research and you try to found out, find out by collecting few new facts, something as a new development, right? So thus we classify this research into majorly three categories. See, different books, different uh, research uh, researchers have given different ideas, but basically we can classify it into three types. One is applied, another is fundamental, and third is business research. So when it comes to applied research, we consider two categories in this. One is where you consider a case study, case study where it is a single entity and you do a 
complete of their historical or their current status and what is their future planning so that is like a, an applied research you want to do another can be a comparative study like if i want to compare ai to uh, the msmes to the medium and or small and medium size uh, micro enterprises so that, that can be a part of the uh, applied research when it comes to fundamental research which there could be facts available there could not be it could be something as an exploratory in nature where there is no background and you can uh, take it as an experiment especially in case of uh, you know scientific research these are all experiments right and then you even go for uh, constructing theories constructing theories is like uh you 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 are developing you you develop a theory based on what work has been done till date and then you come out with a new theory maybe like i have read a few papers there have been a new theory uh, recently there there's one professor uh, professor justin paul who has developed a, a, a theoretical model on mestige marketing right so seeing his uh, past many years of experience uh what he has done is that how marketing has evolved and then what new is been done so he has constructed one all together a new theorem which can be applied in a practical sense also if i go into business research there uh, like in companies you know we we do different kind of uh, data collection we we uh, create a product Again, is it visible? No, ma'am. Shall I continue? Yes, ma'am. Now you can. Is it or no? Now it's you can continue, ma'am. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, there, there's a lot of disconnect, uh, disconnection happening. right so i was talking about uh, business research so the third category or the third type is business research where you try to at times you know we we uh, a company tries to study its uh, five years record which uh, they have been following what have been their ups and downs how they have done or their competitors if if i want to launch a new product so what do i do i i do a competitive study i try to evaluate uh, the marketing strategy of my competitors and on that basis or on the end of this right then we have Uh, if i talk about so i this research so another uh, way to classify this research is into exploratory and then we have uh, sorry exploratory constructive and just a second exploratory uh, then uh, in exploratory as uh, we all know it is uh, where you try to create a structure and identify new problems right so 
uh, something which has not happened earlier or there is a new problem like uh, we all know today we have a solution for covid 19 and i think uh, throughout the entire fdp people have been trying to relate their all sort of work related to this current situation when you and i either you as a participant or i as a speaker we are trying to relate ourselves to this situation which has exploded all of a sudden where there is no to find this looking for homeopathy also people are looking for simply alternative medicines also so people are trying yoga people are trying ayurveda all this is part of the exploratory research uh, a structure and try to find people using a lot of social media why are they doing how are people reacting to online buying uh, how how much uh, people are set of um, mental psychology every day you find people are, are is their social presence uh, uh, more now so these are all new problems which are you you try to identify and then you try to construct your solution on that base. Another is constructive research, where you try to develop a solution. Commonly, this is more into computer science research, right? You develop uh, an algorithm, you try to, uh, an existing problem, say, like this algorithm, maybe uh, you can uh, make it more cost effective, you can make it more uh, timely, it will give you result it will be more speedier so th that kind of a research is constructive research all right and then that is empirical research which empirical it means you have evidences so you try to like if i give medicine today uh, in patanjali i was uh, seeing uh, one video of uh, baba ramdev where He was saying that he was saying that they have done our both medicines, the whole Excuse me, ma'am. Is there any problem, ma'am? Excuse me, ma'am. I think some network issues will be there. We will be back after within a few seconds. Yeah, ma'am. Let's wait. I think there is a network issue only. She is trying to connect again and again.
there is a network issue so let's wait for some time she will be joining it soon i request participants to please bear with the network Hello, ma'am. Sreena, ma'am, are you there? Ma'am, so Naina, ma'am, please unmute yourself. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Ma'am, you are not audible. Please unmute yourself. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Now you are audible. Yeah, actually, I couldn't unmute myself. You could only do me. Yeah, sorry, ma'am. Actually, your uh, your link was uh, link had broken. So we have made you again the co-host. Now you can hold it. All the operations from your end, ma'am. Sorry for that. Sorry for the trouble, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, that, that's why I couldn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We have made you again the coast, ma'am. Please proceed, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, is my screen visible? Ma'am, it's visible, but you put it in a slide. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, I'm just changing it to slide share. Is it okay? Ma'am, um, it's okay now. It's fine. Well, let's just hope that uh, it keeps on continuing in the other way. It is. Okay, so I was talking about uh, empirical research. I hope uh, that thing is clear. So the kind of work uh, right now, uh, the, the research labs are doing where they are conducting different tests to find out whether these medicines will work or not. That is also a, a kind of an empirical research. So where uh, uh, on daily basis you record 
the evidences and you try to see that is it uh, creating a positive impact or whatever kind of a study you are doing. So what are the daily developments? So that kind of a work is an empirical research, right? Uh, if we talk into the other sense, then uh, we conduct uh, or we collect data. When it comes to data collection, you we, we try to collect data through two sources. One is primary and another is secondary source. So when uh, we say primary source, that means you go into that location, you it's the first hand information which you collect and then that data has never existed before that is your primary primary research because uh, let's say again if uh, uh, today we want to see that how many people even after the malls have been opened and uh, i uh, i am a, a, some big uh, mall owner and i want to find out are the people interested in now visiting after this scenario of uh, uh, COVID uh, still existing in, let's say, in India only, are people uh, still uh, afraid of coming to malls or are they mentally prepared? So I ask, I, I prepare a questionnaire and I send a few of the representative to collect the actual data to interview people and uh, ask what is the state of their mind before entering into mall or are they uh, still looking for uh, some online uh, services only or they are not even interested in moving out of their houses not even buying online so what is their perception that kind of a data which you collect is primary primary data collection when it comes to secondary secondary kind of a data is where you involve uh, Right, involve the summary, collation, and or synthesis of existing research. So normally it is like, uh, if I'm doing, uh, uh, let's say again, uh, there was a, a Spanish flu in 1920s and uh, what kind of a medication was referred at that time, similar kind of medicines are being tried and tested. So research which was being done if we consider the same research to try to find out solution because it is already documented that research has already been done and we want to refer to that information that kind of data which you collect through uh, published uh, maybe through something uh, which was being published in newspapers in research journals some medical uh, you know documentations so that data if you collect and you try to come out with a summary or a, a conclusion that what was the scenario then and what is the scenario now so that is usage of secondary research right and next is how how do we do this so when when we say that how do we do this so our general methodology is to make or should we should try to make the clear the reason why you have chosen a particular method means if i am looking for uh, a case study method so why have i adopted this method to conduct my study if i adopted secondary research then why am i looking for why am i going for experimental why am i going for exploratory the purpose of choosing this particular method the reason behind it should be very clear. Now then it says the data that has been collected or is generated should be accepted. That means you cannot collect data through some uh, you know, uh, sources which are not, uh, you can't be confident about, which are not being treated as uh, legal sources because then that work will not be considered as a actual research. Uh, there, there is very common term, sometimes we get confused with the term called plagiarized. See, plagiarized and uh, illegal. In, in a way, they are being used uh, synonymously. Yes, plagiarized is equally illegal, but if you collect the data from some illegal resources that is not plagiarism that is completely fraud 
but plagiarism is when you cut copy paste somebody's data and without mentioning from where you have done and you do not modify or alter according to your uh, scope of study then that data is treated as plagiarized data right then we say that what is the most important part of your studies as we stated that the reason behind choosing a methodology should be clear similarly the objective of a study should be very very clear to uh, whenever you are conducting any research uh, and again i like to specify this particular topic is not only useful for phd scholar this we have to this is useful for an undergraduate also for a person who is uh, doing some job also who is into market studies also who is a uh, post graduation who is doing his mphil anyone who is trying to enter into searching of any form of data so how to go about it 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 gives you a clear concept of what it is all about next is the methodology should also discuss the problems that were anticipated as i stated earlier that uh, because you know one study cannot be a wholesome study we all have certain limitations we all have uh, some constraints constraints in the sense which we have already defined on our own my work may be uh, limited to a zone limit any and whatever is applicable in india will be equally acceptable in us similarly what is acceptable in manufacturing sector will be applicable in service sector similarly what is applicable in uh, me medical study may be applicable applicable to technological advancement so it you have to know which method actually discusses your problem to the best moreover what has been the last anticipation from the study from where you want to carry forward that study then research design uh, we all have to be very particular that what kind of a research we want to get into that means when you start your investigation as i stated if um earlier also i have been telling this you know the work can be qualitative also the work can be quantitative also and similarly it can consider both the aspects also uh, when you write a, a simple paper there you can write in any form but when it comes to uh, writing a research project writing a research thesis writing a research proposal you have to be very particular that what kind of because when you conduct a research project there generally what is been preferred is empirical research that means it should you should go into the field you should uh, find out first of all what the problem is then you should try to analyze why this problem is existing then you can uh, go into the secondary uh, data what has been done to solve this problem as of now and then coming out with new proposed solution to solve that problem let's say uh, a research project can simply be on uh, e-commerce or applying ai to uh, solve you know these uh, the problems of look and feel in all set of industries all set of industries by uh, let's say again the example of uh, uh, textiles fabrics you know uh, problem is in, in today's uh, situation is that uh, you know, once if a cloth is been touched by a person generally it's been said that now there is no return policy right so can there be an inclusion of on the website which is as the existing but to a very nascent level like in case of fragrances we have been seeing there are websites especially outside india there have been few websites even through your system that means that there there's a signal in system through which there can you can smell without 
touching the project uh, product physically but as you're saying you know through uh, 3d formation of uh, trying lens cart is doing it that you can try different uh, forms of glasses which, which suits to your face you know different sides of uh, models uh, of uh, glasses which will look good onto your face before buying but very few have been uh, entering into what kind of uh, uh, clothing will suit onto you right there are again i'll say it has been a very niche market where there have been a little been done till date but now it has become a requirement for an uh, each and every one because you cannot allow every customer because maybe they may buy they may not buy so you have to restrict the usage of a product so you want to give them that or uh, touch feeling in a virtual form right which we have been uh, doing through you know playing games it has been quite a common in today's ar vr games you know where you enter into the game you you feel as if you are actually there and you start playing but this has not been applied to our actual industry you know the the uh, the uh, businesses different other sets of businesses right now uh, so as i already stated so finally when you you try to uh, find out what kind of a work you want to get into so it could be either quantitative it could be qualitative or it can be a mix of both i have already told you that when it comes to quantitative it is actually a number game right where you try to investigate that why and how the or decision making where it has taken place so it is actually being present there asking question jotting them down jotting them down actually means it could be through google docs also now we have uh, so many you know survey monkeys so there have been so many platforms through which you can share your through google drive you can share your uh, question their perception on different set of products it could be simple test marketing also you want to launch a product and then so in that case generally quantitative research is being suggested more in comparison to qualitative research right but when it comes to case based approach their quantitative is not that important to get into quality data that means how do they, how have they evolved in different situations so you want to uh, maybe uh, let's say again if you want to see tatas you want to write a case on tatas how, how they have been uh, developing in last uh, 100 and uh, 100 years or you want to uh, do a case study on patanjali you want to do a case study on uh, some new startups right uh, you you want to do, uh, talk about again this three months duration what has been their journey in these three months what, what has been their struggle so you took uh, maybe uh, ola you took uh, uber you took oyo so in that form qualitative research can work but when if you want to to get into quantitative research right so you have to formulate some mathematical models you have to apply certain theories and you have to compare it with what has been the natural phenomena so like i say that you know uh, there is a very uh, common thing which we use here is hypothesis testing when it comes to quantitative so uh, I, i'll be coming on to that also right then another thing as uh, i stated when it is a matter of words how people express themselves what is going on in their mind so when you ask them to uh, you know express their behavior give reasons why they are doing it why they are feeling this way again the latest topic has been why did sushant singh rajput commit suicide what has been so there you cannot have numbers right that can that study cannot be why the celebrities you know which are so famous which have so much of uh, uh, good uh, financial background why are they getting into this state of depression so in this case 
you cannot uh, you know for you it won't be good to go into quantitative data then you'll have to go into more qualitative where you ask the questions with either two of them who are already there what what has led them into that state why are they taking these kind of decisions when did they observe these di the differences in their uh, behaviors right this kind of thing is generally being done in qualitative research right so uh, like i said uh, when it comes to qualitative research so it could be a few number of people where it is a focus sample if like i'm talking about not only celebrities so top notch celebrities young celebrities or tv celebrity so i'm very focused in my research where i'll interview them where i try to observe their behavior maybe uh, through their uh, social media presence and then i'm asking them uh, since when uh, are you feeling this so you try to collect material on them their entire background this all is more of a qualitative thing at times what you do now uh, when it comes to a research project only or it's a theme, go into multi method multi method means few things which are which may be you have done in, as an experimental model you have uh, developed uh, certain uh, solutions and then a little about what has been done earlier so you try to maybe uh, you know put certain perceptions so you use some qualitative data also so and when you make it how do we uh, i have already explained this so how this data can be uh, collected i think uh, either through surveys like i said uh, there can be a questionnaire when you talk about quantitative data generally in a questionnaire uh, it is being suggested it's not my suggestion in fact it's a Uh, the entire research and community suggestion we should have more of closed question likert scale based question and in that too it has been suggested that we should that there are four point scale also there are even seven point scale also but a commonly suggested scale is five point scale but when it comes to qualitative data there you uh, you are being asked to give more of open ended question where they can Uh, express themselves in words and then you try to you know convert that text into useful information we even call that as uh, in a simple term as con contextual analysis so whatever uh, text you have collected you try to relate it to the concept you are trying to study and then you try to make the observation on the basis of data that you have collected right like i said that i'll be telling you about hypothesis testing this is quite an important uh, thing which we consider when it comes to quantitative uh, kind of study when we are getting into so as you see that it says uh, it explain the nature of relationship because commonly which uh, hypothesis what does hypothesis means that let's consider let's consider means that you before you reach to an outcome you want to say that maybe there is a relationship maybe this relationship may not exist so uh, the most common software which we have been we use uh, for this purpose is spss and uh, moss uh, for conducting uh, the quantitative study so they are what we try to say like, like i say that uh, people have started watching more of web series and youth and so i say a study on youth in uh, these past 3 months or in this covid period uh, watching more of web series they say that as a null hypothesis i say there exists no relationship and as uh, h1 i say there may exist a relationship so when i conduct a survey and i ask people questions related to this uh, objective of mine and i ask them that uh, few set of questions so uh, what has been their uh, uh, frequency of watching uh, a web series maybe before march in last one previous quarter from january to march and then i ask them how many web series have they completed in these 
last three months that means in april may and june or maybe march april and may so i am trying to find out a comparative situation where i ask the person so he, he either they may say lot more or he may say not at all or i do not watch so what am i getting through this is i'm trying to find out is there any relationship between this lockdown and people watching more of web content or web series right so there another thing which is important is i try to find out which is dependent on what now if i say that people web series is an important factor for lockdown no because people are at home they do not have a uh, lot many things to do so now the independent variable is that time duration your lockdown period and the dependent variable is because if they'll have free time they'll watch the, these web series or any sort of web content right so you have to find out which is your independent variable and we which are those dependent variables on that independent variable where you want to uh, conduct the study right now uh, i've already explained this before uh, similarly when you conduct a case study it is generally on a single entity and it is more of a it is considered that it is more of a problem solving techniques because you know through somebody's example you are able to relate and solve your problem if you are in a similar situation Uh, like i say that uh, a case study on uh, maybe uh, netflix i i do a study on netflix or i do a study on people uh, uh, not not exactly people because it has to be single uh, entity on uh, automobile sector so in automobile sector let's say again uh, mahindra and mahindra or any any such uh, company which what has been their journey and through their journey what sort of problems can i solve so that is a part of my problem solving technique uh, as i stated so it involves contextual analysis of similar situation in other organization so you are able to relate to a situation and then you are able to analyze that and come out with uh, maybe similar outcomes or different outcomes also right so generally what types of investigation do we conduct one is uh, clarification where you want to understand a concept for this generally we conduct uh, exploratory or descriptive type of a research then again that means a kind of a, a case based research uh, that can be done for something as which will clarify your concepts then is correlation where uh, correlation can be generally like i said in uh, case of hypothesis testing so where you have at least two concepts and you want to find out which one is dependent on the other one so which one is an independent variable and uh, how does uh, the dependent variable reacts when there is a change in the independent the thing uh, which we try to investigate is types of relationships right so it could be causal relationship it could be experimental it could be uh, group comparisons also so maybe if i'm conducting a, a research on uh, social entrepreneurship people have been donating a lot in this duration companies have come forward there have been ngos who have come forward so i i try to uh, study on uh, their uh, activities what they have been doing so this can be another set of investigation how are they collecting money how are they distributing how uh, what all activities are they involved in to how are they creating awareness programs right so all this is part of uh, your causal relationship right then we have now another important thing which i found this was all about uh, the research methodology another important thing which i thought should be there with you any type of research report you prepare whether it is for the proposal purpose or it is your uh, uh, some uh, project which has been given to you by your faculty mentors or your phd guide so you want to write your synopsis or you want to write your uh, entire thesis so there's a simple uh, 
thing which is called chapterization and when it comes to chapterization there, there, there's a fixed uh, norm which we generally follow so first one which we find is uh, we start with an introduction so if i'm writing uh, some research proposal why i want to conduct a study on this particular problem i i have to be very clear so where is the problem why since when this problem has been existing uh, why it needs attention so your first identification of the problem and from that problem you try to identify the objective that means what do i want to do through this research so my objective statements are being defined in the introduction next important part is the literature review so in literature review what we try to do is we try to review the previous work which has been done with reference to the research problem today we are trying to do uh, people have been uh, talking about uh, environmental studies you know we all have seen that uh, the environment has become a more uh, genial more uh, uh, you know the air is more uh, clean uh, that there's less of carbon emission and the ozone layer is so people are even uh, doing let's say research on this so what they'll do is they'll require previous work being done maybe in last 10 years what has been the situation of uh, the environment and what has been the factors behind it so that today when i say that the air is more clean and uh, it is more uh, pure and there is less of carbon emission so obviously in last uh, 10 years uh, study people must have identified the reason and now you can correlate your study that because all these factors which have been identified earlier they are not existing so your study is today 100% correct that because of less of their existence today the air is more cleaner there is less of carbon emission and the this kind of uh, work so you have to give substantial evidence to what work has been done before only in case of uh, exploratory that means something which has not been done earlier there only you may find that uh, you know uh, there is not much of work being done or there's some invention being done or there's some innovation being done even in case of in uh, innovations you know there is a background study because uh, today uh, if i am coming out with something uh, iot based ai based or we call it as robotics expert systems you name it in a different ways these are all branches of ai so why are we coming out with this for as an alternative source of uh, electricity if we are coming out with uh, wind energy we are coming with solar energy why are we coming out with this because we find there is lack of the current resources so again we have a background study for why we want to do this particular study today because in the background there has been gaps find out that if we do not come out with an alternative we'll be stuck with the limited resources available with us right then uh, third thing which we have to specify in the report is the methods right so how will you collect your data will it be entirely primary which is not at all possible so will it be primary and secondary will it be only secondary which can be possible right so secondary data on the basis of secondary data we can write papers because when uh, maybe there can be an extensive literature review so in that case you can do but when you are doing a research project there you have to have both kind of data collection right so how will you analyze your data what kind of softwares will you use how have you defined what kind of hypothesis testing are you applying how how do you think you'll be able to identify your solutions this has to be specified in uh, form of third caption or third chapter that is the methods fourth chapter that is important uh, for any research project or proposal or thesis is your results and findings how will you present your results because let's say if i say that i'll be using uh, maybe some uh, cloud softwares or spss software or for qualitative data i'll be using nvivo i'll be using atlas ti whichever i have mentioned it in the research method but, but now how will i present it 
that way that means will there be uh, some uh, live data which i'll record and then uh, i'll take the screenshot and then put it in my report, report. Uh, if it is a questionnaire based study then uh, uh, will i be making few pie charts uh, some statistical uh, uh, studies analysis maybe correlation regression uh, sem that there can be n number of uh, studies which you can do then once if that has been done that means you'll present your result how will you interpret this that means if i say problem be identified i want to see the uh, usability of uh, lockdown amongst youth for watching web series so my objective statements are also clear so i want to actually first of all study about the lockdown period because there is a lot of time available and uh, then obviously youth is not uh, getting any work from home and then uh, third has been obviously web content which has been watched in this duration so uh, i i have finalized that i'll be doing a mixed method and then uh, i do a questionnaire study so i i finally put a hypothesis that saying that there is a relation or there is no not a relationship so finally i present the result through uh, making uh, maybe uh, an anova table where maybe it can even include how are the genders in youth also the genders reacting to different situation males are watching more or uh, boys are watching more females are uh, watching what kind of videos or uh, content on web which kind of web series are they watching are people watching more of criminal web series are people watching more of funny element uh, on web and then once it that i have collected then what do i interpret that means this has to have a complete correlation with my objective which i have defined i cannot go a by out right and last but not the least the most important part in this is discussion and conclusion so discussion and conclusion here see uh, at times uh, i have seen people uh, you know they work a lot into first four chapters which you have talked about but when it comes to conclusion it is very limited please keep this thing in mind that it should cover all these points that means whatever has been your uh, interpretation there should be a short summary about that uh, interpretation without the figures which you have already used in your chapter number 4 here you will try to recapitulate that means you will mention so we have observed that uh, males are doing this kind of or watching this kind of stuff more on uh, web and whereas females are watching this type of stuff similarly now then second point which you should always mention is discussion so what it has led to have you uh, because obviously you have a base so you try to compare it Uh, as per the previous studies conducted they show that there has been no relationship between uh, uh, male and uh, female watching different types of content but my study says this that can be another point which you should uh, always include important thing is that whatever research problem you have started your uh, thesis with has that been solved or not so if i say that i was looking for uh, 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 coming out with the, studying the uh, psychology of people watching more of uh, crime uh, web series or uh, comedy more series so has it been achieved in my uh, final outcomes which i have stored to what extent so if you say that uh, i could uh, i found uh, that partially people are uh, you know more reactive to uh, watching web content or uh, web series uh, during this lockdown period so that is another thing which you should mention what has been your learning through this result and how can that be useful to others that means because you know finally where are we leading to you want to tell them that as though the study has been done there has been certain outcomes but it is never a, a definite solution there are always some shortcomings there are always some problems which you could not cover in your study so which i stated earlier also that's a research gap which is a space for the other person to continue his work or her work in future right so that 
that is uh, which you have to consider right uh, from my side i think uh, i have tried to cover uh, whatever best i could do if there are few questions uh, then i would uh, you know like to take thank you ma'am thank you for the yes. wonderful session uh, during the session some of the participants had raised some questions i would like to say take some questions okay. can i take ma'am yes yes uh, please please okay uh, one question is what research methodology will be appropriate for examining impacts of covid-19 on health outcomes on uh, on covid-19 health outcomes what health research outcomes. methodology we can uh, appropriate for this method see i uh, i'll i'll suggest that uh, when it comes to uh, applying research methodology i said uh, there can be uh, obviously three ways you can do one can be quantitative where you can uh, obviously uh, uh, record the reactions of people how they are coping up in this situation and for that you can go for uh, conducting a survey that means questionnaire based study can be done which we call in simple terms as a quantitative study if you want uh, how uh, the companies are doing or uh, how they are trying to come out with solution in this duration for covid 19 then obviously a qualitative study a case based study can be done which can be uh, another way to solve the problem uh, but generally what i prefer is that you know in case based studies uh, it is it is a limitation as i stated earlier also because what is applicable to one company is never applicable to all the rest of the companies because their working environment is different their style their patterns everything is different so if you want that your study should reach to masses like in current situation it is always advisable go for more of quantitative study where you create a, a survey questionnaire you ask people's uh, uh, reviews and then record it and then apply uh, software and come out with outcomes okay our next question is quantitative research can be applied by all the subjects depending on the research hypothesis chosen quantitative research can be applied to apply all sort of all subjects depending on the research hypothesis chosen uh, so all types of subjects uh, if i if i am able to understand it correctly then obviously if you are doing something uh, in hr hr practices then also you can conduct uh, you know uh, quantitative study if i talk about uh, it then also obviously we can conduct if you talk about finance see quantitative is when you want to have more of numeric data uh, generally we we uh, have a misconception that quantitative you know quantitative data is only only for marketing it is a very very strong misconception people have that when it comes to surveys you know uh, asking consumers perception behavior buying pattern i agree that maximally these studies are more useful for markets for doing businesses but in a business all the fields are important all the subjects are important if if i want to know uh, about uh, best hr practices being followed by Uh, top hundred companies. So in that case, I have to conduct, and that that study is more useful for HR people. If I want to find out competency mapping happening happening right now in this duration, in this case, uh, it, it is a more uh, the data will be useful more when it is quantitative in nature, right? Now our next question is: Does big data analytics give scopes for type one and type two errors fulfill the condition of normality? With the does big data analytics give so give scope for type one and type two errors? Does it fulfill hmm. the condition of normality? Uh, fulfill the condition of normality. normality ha huh. so what what do they want to ask what do they want to ask i think they want to ask big data analytics gives scope for type 1 and type 2 errors maybe 
scope of yes ma'am they have written this like this the question in itself uh, seems to be a little incomplete uh, so ma'am one more we have question uh, yeah. we have one more question difference between references and bibliography okay uh, that that's a good question in fact yes uh bibliography and uh, i i wanted to cover but the topic was entirely different you know uh, recently as if this is not related to only the question there have been a lot of uh, work being done into writing papers on bibliometric analysis also right when we say uh, references uh, references are uh, obviously uh, you know the journals from where you are trying to uh, use papers for your literature review for your secondary data collection so there what we say is and there are different formats in which you collect the uh, references uh, the most common which we use for the research papers are uh, either the harvard style or that is apa american uh, format right so that in simple terms we call it as uh, uh, reference uh, this references when it comes to bibliography bibliography does include uh, the databases from where the entire research on a topic has been done so it can include journals also it can include your uh, uh, books also country wise study also so bibliography talks about the uh, the wholesome study where in references you talk about the the uh, you know the different journals from where you have referred the papers so you have to give that source from where you have collected that data in your literature review so that is mentioned in your references uh, uh, at times we have seen that uh, in uh, you know when uh, uh, a project is written or a research uh, paper is written we have references mentioned but in uh, bibliography we try to mention even the the uh, databases that has been used the the journals which have been used every sort of information from where you have collected that has been mentioned in the bibliography i hope uh, your answers has cleared the participants doubt thank you for thank yeah, you i i do think so thank you ma'am over to yeah. you today thank you so much it was uh, really a pleasure and i'm um, once again thankful to uh, uh, jss for giving me this opportunity and i'm thankful to uh, professor singhal uh, to you shobha madam and uh, to uh, dr shivani for uh, and the other coordinators mr hanumantha and uh, everyone who has been working so hard to make this uh, event so successful even after so many interruptions finally we could make it and i hope the uh, the content was good the presentation uh, i hope you found was good so uh, i would uh, really uh, love to stay in touch with uh, you people and again i'm thankful to my director who always uh, motivates me to do this kind of uh, you know be part of these fdps we we also keep on uh, attending in these fdps to enrich ourselves uh, once again i'm i'm thankful to all of you thank you so much Sir, over to over to HOD, sir, sir. Sir. Yeah, ma'am. I am. Yeah, I am listening, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. I respect your words and I respect uh, every theme and uh, you can say that content that you always uh, showcase us and enlighten us with your uh, you can say enriched areas that you have in research methodology, whatever. Like last time also, we had such a lovely talk and it was really uh, nice to. i can say to like you motivate also not only with your uh, content but you motivate ourselves uh, others also to go into the theme and indulge into that while uh, while your presentation is going on it's really Thank awesome you. and uh, like we keep listening uh, uh, your keywords from uh, your uh, scholar that has been awarded the degree why right now in your uh, you can yes, send yes. your college. more so, than me nobody she, can feel proud to call her the doctor you know <laughs> yeah we also keep listening all those things that uh, how uh, proudly and how efficiently you have worked uh, all together and guided all of us so it's really remarkable to be in touch with you always and uh, since we all are also in pursuing in the same way so we'll always be needing your help from time to time and i feel that you will yeah. never uh, deny for that <laughs> and i'll be i'll be more than happy to help each one of you whatever i know if i can uh, share with all of you my purpose is yeah. all 
thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank I would you. also I would also request you, ma'am, if you are comfortable, you can share your email ID on the chat box so that any research scholar who is available with us sure. can get I, in I, touch I, with you. Can get in touch with you for uh, whatever uh, you can say recommendation. Sure. Or whatever. I can do that. I, I'll do that. I'll, I'll share. Thank you so much, ma'am. Have a great day, ma'am. From I really thank you, thank thank you from our so management of JSS Academy of Technical Education, NEDA. As well as from our team of International Faculty Development Program. Thank you so much, ma'am. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just uh, uh, putting my email ID. Yeah, ma'am. You can put it in the chat box, ma'am, so that they yes, can I'm, be comfortable I'm there. talking to you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So over to you, Shobha, ma'am. We will be starting at 1 p.m. now. There is a break. Uh, you can announce the participants, and we can get back again at 1 p.m. Yes, sir. It's formally break now. We will be back at one o'clock. Our next session is from one o'clock, and uh, I request all the participants to be there at before ten minutes. Means around twelve fifty, you should be there. Be there at twelve fifty. Thank you. Now it's a break. <laughs>